it, which just adds to the completely alien feeling of the book, like looking at a completely concrete and well-defined world through the lens of a kaleidoscope. So thank God for, for BookTube. If it weren't for BookTube, I would not have the slightest clue that this book ever existed and my life would be all the poorer for it. Seriously. This is going to be a hard one, by the way. I think I have the most notes for this than I have for, for, for anything yet. Okay, so spoiler warning, not really. Not, no, not for this one. I'm going to give you a breakdown and a basis for kind of what to expect how the book is written and structured and things like that. Maybe try and get a hype train rolling for you, but this is more of a before you read kind of deal, but mixed with a review. But like I said, just, just mild spoiler warning, but there's really no spoilers. Anyways, this is going to be hard, but here we go. So what do you need to know if, before you read this book? Seriously, if you're going to read this book, what do you need to know? This is a science fiction book told as though it were a fantasy, told by an unreliable narrator, and it is about three times removed from the events that are happening, as far as I can tell. Right? Okay, now let's break that down. It's, it's a science fiction story because it's a dying earth story that takes place in the ruins of a technologically advanced society that had space travel and genetic engineering and all kinds of crazy stuff that existed in this world before it, it collapsed. Some of that technology even still exists, but the know-how to use it is pretty much moved on and, you know, mostly gone. And, and, you know, and let's be honest, this concept isn't new or fresh or, or unique in any way, shape, or form. I just did the review of The Gunslinger, where I talked about the world takes place. It's a post-apocalyptic future of a post-apocalyptic future. So this isn't necessarily new as far as a concept. What is fun and fresh is how the story is delivered, being that um, unreliable narrator and three times removed from the story. Uh, now, unreliable narrator who admits to being possibly insane, probably insane, one of those, and claims to have perfect memory. But also, there are times in the story where his memory fails him, and he openly admits that it failed him while still claiming that he has perfect memory, while still claiming that he's quite possibly insane. This is your main character and the narrator of your story. Now, I said that the story is three, three times removed from the events that are happening. And by that, I mean he's at the end of his life and he's recalling the events for you. So they're not happening now. They happened before. So now you're once removed from the actual events and they're happening. Now, he's not recalling this to you. He wrote all of this down. Then after he wrote it down, it was found by another person, and that other person's the one that's actually telling you the story. So I guess that would be the twice removed. Now, when he wrote this down, he wrote this down far in the future in a language that has not yet been invented yet. So when it was found or somehow relayed back to the translator, which is in our day, he had to then translate it from this far-flung futuristic language that doesn't even exist yet into modern English for us to be able to read. And in translating it, he was he just had to do his best because some of the words or objects didn't have appropriate English equivalents, so he had to substitute words to the best of his ability in order to make the story readable and make it make sense for us, the readers. So that is yet another separation from what you're actually reading about so there could be more i could be miscounting i don't know but as far as i can tell you are literally at least three times removed from what you're reading about which makes it wholly unique and unlike anything i have personally ever read before and it is wonderful also, since learning about this book and diving into it and, and talking to people and, and watching, uh, you know, just videos about it, people are forever talking about just how dense and complicated and hard to understand 
and I read this book and I didn't even know what I what it was about when the book ended and all these comments that you'll hear in your in your ventures of learning about this or looking into it and I think that's a little bit unfair for the book uh, because I don't feel like this book is complicated to understand at all like really not difficult to understand even a little now hear me out before you get all weird that I just said that because the actual plot of this book is just fascinatingly simple. I could literally sum these, this entire book up with man leaves home, walks across town, the end. That is the plot of the entire book. There, spoiler alert, I just told you the story. But that's it. Yes, he's going to run into some people along the way. Some things are going to happen. They will do some things as that goes along. But the core of the story is... Man leaves home, walks across town, the end, and there is nothing complicated about it. It is not hard to comprehend. It is not hard to understand what's happening as it's happening. When he meets somebody, you're not confused. Oh, was that a man or was that an alien? No, he just met a person and they had a conversation. You can follow it. It is not hard. That's on the surface. That's the very, very tippity top level of this book having said all that this book of course this book is so much more than that and there is so much more to it and they are so many layers beneath that surface layer and the more effort that you put into reading the book and the more effort that you put into poking down through those different layers, the more you're going to get out of it, the richer it's going to become, the deeper it's going to become. It is amazing how much depth there is to it. That's This is where it gets complicated, and this is where people get lost. But as far as understanding what's happening, it's not that hard. Also, you are in no way obligated to go down deeper in layers. You could skip right across the top of this book and just get well I left my little house and I went across town and I went from point A to point B to point C and you can understand and follow the plot all the way to the end and you would be perfectly fine in doing so and there's nothing wrong with doing so but if you want to you can go down the rabbit hole that is this book and you will be rewarded for doing it let me tell you and I have some but not a lot. Like, I'm I'm on a first-time read of this, and I delved some as I went, so I can do this, and I can say this confidently and honestly, and I can say, yes, it goes down, and yes, you will be rewarded, but do not consider me an authority on this, <laughs> you know? Not at all. This is also pretty much why that I say this is, book is uniquely amazing. It is so amazing, and it is so unique in its delivery. It is just, and this might not be the only book out there that has this approach or is done in this way, but if it isn't, I sure don't know of another one, which is fine. I mean, if there's more, please let me know, and I will actively seek those out because this is great but uh, yeah no seriously like i said uh, it's it's unique to me because i've never seen anything like it anyway now with all of that hocus pocus out of the way what would i normally talk about in a book review uh world building i'm i'm forever banging on about world building so what what can i say about the world but well obviously i would think that it would make sense that this is some of the best world building ever just because of what I've pretty much everything that I've just said it's an amazing world and it's a very rich world and it is detailed so detailed that you can go down and just keep going and you will just keep finding more and all of that adds depth to the world but the world building is super awesome partially due to how obscure the world building is it's not fed to you straight directly it's really obscured and then particularly in spite of how obscure it is because you have to go digging for it. You have to work for it because it's not handed to you and fed to you like, like other books would do. And if you're paying attention and if you're putting in the effort, it's there and it's dense and it gets better. And of course, you are nothing but rewarded. Now, characters. What do we, what do we say about the characters? Well, they're... 
<laughs> They're interesting, to say the least. They almost universally have very distinct and very interesting and colorful characters, especially Severian. And at certain points of the story, their thoughts and their actions and their behaviors and the, will seem completely plausible and believable and everything makes perfect sense as to why they're doing what they're doing and saying and acting how they're acting and then the next minute the characters thoughts and behaviors and actions will seem completely absurd and ridiculous especially Severian which just adds to the completely alien feeling of the book like looking at a completely concrete and well-defined world through the lens of a kaleidoscope just a fair warning, though, the female characters and the female representation in this book people might find a little problematic, especially in this day and age, although I find that warning unfair to the book in general and almost an insult to readers. Uh, yeah. uh, because, you know, because I just feel like somebody's going to read this, see the way Severian treats the females or talks to the females or even thinks about them and be like blah, 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 blah. like be offended and it's just it's that's almost an, if you're an intelligent reader you shouldn't be offended it should make sense uh i mean i think gene was not a, an idiot when he wrote this i mean there he severian is going to think and say and do some pretty not great things at and towards and to the female characters in this book. But if you could put yourself in the consciousness and the uh, uh, headspace of this character, I mean, we're in the this futuristic world where you don't understand their world and its customs, and then you have to also take into account that he was raised in a guild of torturers. He's also never been around a single female in his entire life because the females are not allowed in the guild of torturers. Then he's been taught that there used to be women in the guild of torturers, and they had to be removed and expelled from the guild due to the fact that the female sex was too cruel of a sex, and they were not appropriate to be torturers. Now, be that true or not, or whether or not that was ever true, or how they were removed, or why they were removed, is irrelevant. All that's relevant is that this is what this person has experienced. This is what this person has been told and trained to believe. And now he is sent out into the world and meeting females for the first time in his entire life. At the peak of his hormones raging completely out of control. And now you expect him to behave appropriately. No, 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 never under any circumstances is he going, is with this upbringing and these circumstances that he's now entering the world under no circumstances is he going to think or act appropriately so i thought it was good yeah you really got to separate yourself in some parts of this book from from the year 2022 and your super modern upbringing to what this torturous world would actually be like and what a teenage boy would actually how he would actually function it's really it's really interesting anyway so in conclusion this is probably the best book that i've read in a very long time um at, at the very least the best reading experience uh uh go get this and check it out because god my lord it's so good um it's just there is no rating for this book, at least the first one. I have not made it any further. I have not even made it to the Claw of the Conciliator yet. But, as far as I'm concerned, Shadow of the Torturer, there is no score for this book other than a perfect 10. I mean, 10 out of 10. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.